If you're watching this video, hopefully that means the installation login to Fusion 360 was successful. But that's just the first step. In this video, we'll introduce you to the interface, controls, and show you how to export files from 123D Design and bring them into Fusion 360. Let's open what we call the data panel, where you'll see a handful of projects. It's okay if yours shows less than this, mine have built up over time. At the bottom, however, I want to point you to some examples and training files, which will come in handy later. Anyway, back to where we were, let's start a new project by clicking this button and give it an appropriate name. When I do, Fusion will show me the contents of the newly created project, which are unsurprisingly empty. Let's change that by uploading our 123D design to our project. To do this, click the button you see here, and it opens the dialog box. Let's slide over to 123D design to explore how to get your files out. To do this, I'll use the drop down on the left, which gives me an option to export this to 3D. While there are a number of options available, the best option to use without hesitation is the SAT file. We'll use that option, give it a name, and save it somewhere easy to find. Back in Fusion, we'll continue with the upload operation. We just need to find the file or files, then click the upload button. While it's uploading, I can continue to work on other designs, and if I want to monitor the upload process, I can re-access the same dialog at any time. This won't take long, however. It finishes, and you'll see a thumbnail in the data panel, which we can then click to open. When it comes into Fusion 360, it appears to have been rotated. This is because 123D Design and Fusion 360 use different axes for the up orientation. I'll show you how to change this a bit later, but we'll work with this as it is now. I can use the same view cube found in the same location to now adjust the view orientation. You should already be familiar with this and how to use it. So I'll adjust my view until I come to something I would identify as a front view. Now to tell Fusion 360 this, I'll right mouse click on the home icon, scroll down to where it says set current view as, then set this as my front view. This will help me rotate in a more predictable manner. Okay. So let's get to know some of the other ways to adjust views using the navigation bar on the bottom of the screen. Here you'll find similar options to what you used to access on the right side of the 123D interface. You can adjust viewports, turn grids on or off, adjust visual styles, environments, object visibility, and turn perspective views on or off. You can zoom to a window or zoom globally, pan, look normal to faces with the look at tool, which I'll demonstrate. Once I've done so, I'd also like to zoom to fit by double-clicking my middle mouse wheel. And finally, I can orbit here as well. There are different orbit methods, free or constrained, the latter of which will treat the model as if it is resting on a ground plane. At the top of the screen, you'll find the toolbar, which contains all the related commands to extrude, fillet, assemble, move, measure, and so on. The tools found here are similar to what you'd expect from 123D Design. On the left-hand side, you'll see something entirely new, the browser. This contains all the bodies, components, construction geometries, sketches, and more related to the current design. Now, let's turn on something I think you'll all be very excited to use, design history. So let's turn it on by right mouse clicking the top level name in the browser and selecting Capture Design History. This will turn on another part of the interface that will be foreign to you, the history timeline. What this will do is contain all the actions related to how a part is built. In this case, the imported part will be represented as a single base feature, so not much to see now, but wait till later. If I add a quick feature like a hole by hitting the H key on my keyboard and dropping it on the side, it will add a feature in the history. This is incredibly helpful and more powerful than a simple undo, redo style of history control, because at any time in the history, I can recall a feature and make a change, and all subsequent features will update. Back to the interface though, at the top you'll see a traditional file menu where you can start new designs, save, export, take a screenshot, and so on. Back up to the upper right corner, you'll see your login name, under which you'll be able to access preferences. One very important one I want to call out is this, default model orientation. If you change this from Y up to Z up, you'll match what's coming from 123D design and avoid the view manipulation steps I showed earlier. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Basically, if you change this once, you'll save yourself some serious time and effort. Take a look at other preferences, but I'd recommend you try to learn Fusion with as many defaults as possible, apart from the unit system maybe. If you do change the default unit system, that will apply to new designs going forward, but any that you've already started will remain as they were. To change units for an active document, use the units option found in the browser. 
Other options under your username will enable you to view your account, adjust your profile, work offline, or sign out. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the help menu to new users. From here, you'll find tons of helpful things like generalized lessons from the Learn page, an integrated getting started tutorial, forums where you can connect with other users and Autodesk employees for help, a gallery to see others' designs, a roadmap to see what's coming next, and this one is huge, an ability to suggest changes to the software. This could be new features altogether or new options that might help you or others like you. I'll click the Getting Started link, and that will cover some of the most important things for new users, like default units, navigation view manipulation, which I would recommend you try to master as soon as possible, and it will connect you to hours of educational materials. Last thing to show you in Fusion 360 is how to change workspaces. This is a new concept for those of you coming from 1 2 3 d Designs. But what it does is takes you, within the same interface, to different modes. Like if you need to create a rendering or drawing, you should never need to leave the Fusion 360 interface. Simply change workspaces. That's all for now. Check out the next video where we'll learn about how you can access Fusion 360 data from the web, how you can collaborate on designs, and we'll make preparations to rebuild this phone stand in Fusion 360.